So where are we on the handout? We protonated the carbonyl oxygen. Now the carbonyl oxygen has left as water. And then the next step, subsequently now, a second nucleophilic atom is going to attack the formal, former carbonyl carbon. Mm -hmm. Now who is the nucleophilic atom in this problem? We're going to use the same nucleophilic atom as we used before. So which is the atom that's nucleophilic here? Who did we use before? As our nucleophile. We used, oh, this um, CH3OH methanol. Which of those atoms is the nucleophile? Oh, the oxygen. That's right, we use the oxygen. Now, we're not going to use the same oxygen as before. We're going to use an oxygen in another methanol. So we want to do this with two equivalents of methanol. Maybe I should have said it up front. We're putting in two equivalents of methanol so that we can do a category two reactions and have ourselves attack twice. So now, oh, sorry, if he doesn't put that, that we have two. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. I think, generally speaking, yeah, generally speaking, you're going to assume that you have enough equivalents of alcohol for this reaction to go all the way. That's right. I don't think he would give you a trick question where he doesn't have enough equivalents of alcohol unless he really signals that. Okay. Generally speaking, we assume that we have enough. In fact, I think oftentimes people don't even bother putting in this two. We just assume that we have enough equivalents for this to go all the way. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit sloppy, but that's what people usually do. So now we can show the second nucleophilic atom attacking. Now we know that alcohols are not great nucleophiles, but obviously a carbocation is a terrific electrophile. So this should be an easy reaction to have happen. And we can draw. The intermediate from that step. OK, that's good. And then we have to decide what's going to happen next. Now, I think you remember to put in this positive charge here on the oxygen. That's good. Well, we know nature doesn't like charges. So nature probably wants to get rid of that charge. And we can confirm that on our handout here. Now that the second nucleophile has attacked, now that second nucleophile has to be protonate. We should have predicted that, we should have predicted that would happen anyway, because nature doesn't like charges. So nature would like to get rid of this charge. Who can we use to take this proton? Our sulfuric acid. We can use this sulfate that we generated over here. Sulfuric acid likes to give protons, and then the sulfate likes to take a proton back. So we can use that sulfate. So we can draw the products from that step. This will be our final product. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is just about the most complicated reaction you'll see in the whole course. There really are a lot of steps here. Again, there's really only three main things that happened. First, the first alcohol attacked and broke the pi bond. The second main thing that happened is that the carbonyl oxygen had to leave to make room for the third thing, which was for the second alcohol to attack. However, the thing that makes this complicated is that those three main reactions are festooned with a bunch of protonations and deprotonations. And the handout kind of explains those. The protonation should make sense. The first protonation makes this into a better electrophile. And then we need to deprotonate this nucleophile to get rid of its positive charge. And then we need to protonate this to make this into a better leaving group. And then again, we have to deprotonate the nucleophile to get rid of its positive charge. There's a bunch of things we have to say about this. 
I agree to always be an alcohol and a passive. Let's see. That's the main, most important example of category two. That's right. There are some other examples that we may or may not get to today, but the most important example is alcohol and acid. That's right. Alcohol and acid. All right, so what are some points that we need to make here? Well, we showed this starting with an aldehyde, but it could have started with a ketone. Remember, all these reactions can start with aldehydes or ketones. Let's make sure, so make sure that you didn't forget this hydrogen in your final product over here, since we started with an aldehyde. I think you got that. Good. By the way, uh, a good acid to use here is sulfuric acid, but a lot of the time people are lazy and they just call the acid H+. So sometimes you might see that happen. You might even see that in the answer key. Instead of saying sulfuric acid, sometimes people just say H+. But maybe it's better to actually say sulfuric acid because then you have somebody to do the deprotonation steps. Then you have the sulfate to do the deprotonation steps. So I've seen some, or is like the way it looks on one of the practice exams, is that like the hydrogen, instead of using sulfate to take off hydrogen, it is jumped to the right. That's an important point. Maybe we can talk about that in a second. Okay. Yeah, that's important. Are they the same thing? Pardon? Are they the same thing? That's basically the same thing. So the point you're saying is, so notice what happened here. First, we took the proton off of this oxygen. Mm -hmm. And then we put a proton onto this oxygen. Mm -hmm. Well, couldn't we have just, so first of all, we had the sulfate take the proton from this oxygen. Mm -hmm. And then the very next thing we had, it had happened was we had the sulfate, sulfuric acid put the proton back on this oxygen. Mm -hmm. Well, couldn't you just cut out the middleman? We could just cut out the middleman and just have the proton, this oxygen, just take the proton directly. Mm -hmm. All right, and that would be a legitimate way to write that. Okay. That would be legitimate. In fact, maybe that's better. That's how you would usually see it in the answer key. This is more realistic. This is more of what actually happens in solution. Mm -hmm. However, it's a, it's a allowed shortcut to show the proton just hopping from here to here. Mm -hmm. So how would that look like in the handout? So in our handout here, at this point we say the nucleophilic atom deprotonates and then the very next thing that happens is the carbonyl oxygen protonates. Mm -hmm. Well, the way we showed that happening is the sulfuric acid took this proton and then gave it to this oxygen. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, you can just combine these into a single step. You can add this to the handout here. If you want to, you can combine these into a single, what's called proton transfer. You can combine those into a single proton transfer, and you can cut out the sulfuric acid middleman. That's a little less realistic, but that's a shortcut that is allowed in uh, on exams. So maybe in the future we'll start doing that. Mm -hmm. Basically, anytime in these problems where you had a deprotonation immediately followed by a protonation, mm -hmm. you can combine those into one step where one person just takes the proton from the other. But here's why I wanted to draw it this way in this example. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. I'll probably get confused the other mm -hmm. way. Now, the reason I wanted to draw it this way here is. There's a special name for this here. So notice that here we started with an aldehyde, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and here we have this product here. Well, this is what's called an acetal. This is what's called an acetal. Now, you might have also heard the name ketal. Yes. Well, what's the difference between an acetal and a ketal? Well, a ketal is what we would have gotten if we had started with a ketone instead of an aldehyde. If we had simply started with a ketone, so let's say that instead of this being a hydrogen, suppose this had been just a, an R group. Suppose this had been a carbon chain. If we use R for a carbon chain, then we would call this a ketone. So when we do the acid-catalyzed alcohol attack on an aldehyde, the final product is an acetal. But when we do an acid-catalyzed alcohol attack on a ketone, the final product is a ketal. That's not too hard to remember because ketal sounds like ketones. So ketals come from ketones. Ketals come from ketones. And acetal starts with an A, like aldehyde starts with an A. So maybe that also kind of reminds us of aldehydes. Acetals come from aldehydes. Ketals come from ketones. Now how can you tell? whether you started with an aldehyde or a ketone without doing the whole mechanism. How can you tell? Well, if you started with an aldehyde, the final product should have a hydrogen. If you started with an aldehyde, the final product should have a hydrogen. And if you didn't start with an aldehyde, there should be no hydrogen on the, on the, carbonyl, ox, on the carbonyl carbon over here. So it's not too hard to tell, even without looking at the whole mechanism, whether you started with an acetal or a ketal. However, we also have to give a name 
to this intermediate. Now, notice this is the intermediate we got at this point. This was the intermediate we got after only the first alcohol had attacked. Remember that what we basically had happen here was the first alcohol attacked and then the second alcohol attacked. Well, here's what we had after the first alcohol attacked. This is not the final product. This is our intermediate. This is what we had when we were about halfway through. This is what we had when we were about halfway through. Well, remember that our final product here was an acetal. Our final product was an acetal because we started with an aldehyde. So what should we call the product when we're halfway through? Well, that would be a hemiacetal. So the hemiacetal is this intermediate. This is what you get after the first alcohol has attacked, but before the second alcohol has attacked. 